Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. So, the law could not give life. Okay, The law could not give life. The law could not impart righteousness. The law could not justify. The law could not make anyone perfect. Okay, It really vexes me when I hear these hyper-dispensational heretics teaching that people in the Old Testament were saved by works or by faith and works. It is absolute nonsense. Okay, These men are false teachers. They are taking verses out of context and they are, and in doing so, they're, they're blaspheming God. Okay? It's absolutely ridiculous. And it, it vexes me that there are so many that follow this trash. And I know that there are these big uh, charismatic preachers who, uh, you know, that spreaded this heresy even further, like Peter Ruckman. And so we got on YouTube, we got Greg Miller and Josh Cohen and Brian Denlinger and Robert Breaker and all kinds of people, you know, with thousands of followers, and they're just laughing up this false doctrine and the Bible is very clear in the book of Romans you know Romans chapter 4 and other chapters and Hebrews 11 and, and the other chapters in Hebrews and in Galatians and Colossians the Bible teaches all over that salvation has always been by grace through faith now of course the content of faith what they believed in in the Old Testament isn't the same as what we believe today they didn't believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins obviously Jesus hadn't came yet okay and, and, and what people believed uh, further on down the years, they, they believed more and more, you know, as, as things were revealed. They believed God, okay? Um, so that is what the Bible teaches. It's very clear. I just read that the law could not give life. And I've heard this pervert, Robert Raker, say that, uh, you know, that Abraham was uh, believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. That's what the Bible teaches. And then he says he was also uh, saved by works or something and adds that on there. The Bible doesn't say that. That's completely nonsense. Okay? In the book of James, yeah, you know, was not Abraham justified by works, his works also? That means in man's sight. Okay? It's talking about if a man says, says this, you know, says I believe God and he doesn't have works, you know, should we believe him? Can that kind of faith save him? This is talking about from a person's perspective perspective, not from God's perspective, okay? Nobody is going to be justified by works in God's eyes, okay? Because all have sinned in every dispensation. We've all been sinners, okay? Born in sin, okay? And when you're born again, now you're a saint. You're no longer a sinner. A sinner in the Bible all the time is always a lost person, okay? And I definitely need to do a study on that, but we need to understand that. Yes, after you're saved, you still have that sin nature. You still have a corruptible body, a corruptible mind. You're going to struggle and war with the flesh. Yes, but you're no longer a sinner. You no longer live a lifestyle of sin. But anyways, what I'm saying is in every dispensation, they were all born sinners. And, and even these hyper-dispensational heretics, they'll say, you know, in their gospel messages, uh, you can't be saved by works because you're a sinner and all your works are like filthy rags and whatnot. Yeah, what do you think it was like for them? It was the exact same. Okay, and people get confused, you know. Well, Jesus hadn't died on the cross yet. That doesn't matter, okay? They, they didn't go to heaven. They went to a place called paradise until Jesus died on the cross. But still, they had to believe God. It was by grace through faith. The only way that it can be by, gra or by, you know, by grace is if it's by faith. It can't be works and grace. There's no such thing as being justified in the sight of God with works and faith. Okay? It doesn't work out. And there's no such thing as being justified in God's sight by works at all. Because all have sinned. It's very simple, and there's many, many scriptures in the Bible that teach this, okay? But you, you, you can watch people and like, you know, like Peter Ruckman and like things that he says and get all excited, and they, 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 they deceive. And you get caught up in all this. And I just want to ask those people who follow, follow Brian Denlinger and Robert Breaker who watch my videos that you just please will just pray about this and study. Because I'm not making these videos just to bash people like Robert Breaker and, and Brian Denlinger, Greg Miller, whoever else, and more people that I'll expose. Uh, it's not about that. I'm not out here to, you know, cause arguments and to, you know, 
whatever people think that you know I'm just being really mean and angry or whatever no but this is the truth I believe you know I am born again <laughs> I am indwelt I am regenerated I'm indwelt with the Holy Spirit I love God's Word and God's Word is not hard for us to understand okay and they are people are completely taking this out of context and teaching and believing a heresy and it's really hard for me to believe that someone who's been doing this for years and years and years is even saved okay because the Bible says that the natural man will not receive the things of the Spirit, you know, of the Word of God. And uh, so, i got to kind of thank. Um, so I'm really just kind of pleading with you, you know. I've been, you know, since I've got saved, and even still now, there are things, you know, that I go back and forth on, you know. And after, not long after I got saved, I've wondered about the gift of tongues. Is that still for today? What is that? You know, I've wondered about repentance. I've wondered if people can lose salvation and stuff. And I've went back and forth, and I've prayed and prayed, and I've studied and I've studied, looking at different studies, reading a lot of articles, listening to a lot of different teachings, both sides, okay. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed until I figured it out, and God revealed it to me. God has to reveal it to you. But you have to seek the truth. God has also given people to proclaim the truth. And I just feel really convicted about this to, to continue on this subject. And you know, throughout my ministry, I always continue it. It's, it's just to see so many people following this trash that, that believe that people are saved by works or saved by faith and works. And, uh, or that in the future, in the millennial kingdom or whatever, it's going to be by works. It's complete nonsense. You know, and people want to say, well, what about the mark of the beast? What about the mark of the beast? Well, the Bible says nothing about saints taking the mark of the beast, okay? Eternal security is the same in every dispensation. Salvation is always of the Lord, by grace, through faith. Everyone is always eternally secure who is saved. You must be born again. Once you're born again, it's a permanent deal. Okay? It always has been. And it always will be. Okay? The saints will refuse to take the mark. And people don't want to accept that. But that's the way that it is. They are eternally secure as well. Now, here's one thing to, to consider. Okay? Can someone who's born again, can a true, saved Christian live a lifestyle of sin? No, they can't. Okay? In 1 John, you know, many passages, it says, you know, whosoever is born of the Spirit doth not sin. You know, doesn't commit sin, doesn't commit sin, you know, continually, a continual lifestyle of sin. We know that when a person is born again, they're a new, a new creature in Christ, okay? There is a change. They are regenerated. They're indwelled by the Holy Spirit. There's definitely been a change in my life. Um, but I'm just going to say, you know, so can a Christian live a lifestyle of sin? No. Does that mean that they don't have free will? Okay, we know that Christians still struggle with the flesh. Christians still commit sins. You know, they don't live a lifestyle of sin, but yes, they can still commit sins and probably will. So, uh, so I think that's the thing that a lot of people get wrapped up on is the whole free will thing as far as the mark of the beast. It's like, well, you're saying that, you know, a Christian can't make that choice? Well, a Christian won't make that choice because they're indwelled by the Holy Spirit. They're regenerated, okay? They can't live a lifestyle of sin anymore. They're not going to bow down to the Antichrist and take the mark, and that's why they're going to be beheaded for refusing to take the mark. It's as simple as that. They are eternally secure, okay? You need to understand this. Because if you're met, you can't just say, and, and there's people that just say, well, they're, yeah, they are wrong, but they're right about other things and stuff. This isn't just something that we can disagree on. This is the doctrine of salvation. It's very crucial, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, what dispensation it is, okay? You can't say, you know, people are, you're saved by grace through faith today, but in the Old Testament, you know, they were saved by doing 20 jumping jacks or something, you know? That's heresy. I reject that. That person's a fool. The Bible is clear on these things, and I keep saying this again and again, but it is the truth. And um, so I want you to pray about these things and to study, uh, study, you know, all sides. But you got to come to the conclusion that it's always by grace through faith. That's the only way. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And uh, I don't know. Uh, you know... Like, what about baptism? Okay, there's the commandment to be baptized. Okay, a Christian should be baptized. Do you have to be baptized to be saved? Absolutely not. Now, Robert Breaker teaches that people did have to be baptized to be saved. You know, Peter was, was preaching that in Acts. That's what he says. That's nonsense. That's heresy. 
Okay? Nobody ever had to be baptized to be saved. That's completely ridiculous. So, the same thing goes with the Old Testament sacrifices. Yes, they were commanded to, to give sacrifices, commanded to do this and that. You know, they had the whole ceremonial law and all that, but they were not saved by doing that. Okay? They did those things as a, as a response of being saved. Okay? Uh, you know, if they didn't offer sacrifices or, or do anything by faith, then the Lord didn't want it. Okay? You know, uh, it says like in Proverbs, I think that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination in the sight of God. You know, and you think that these people who were saying that that they were saved by works or works and faith in the Old Testament, that that was how they got right with God. But God said, no, I don't want that. You're wicked. You know, it's got to be by faith. Okay. They had to repent and believe in the Lord just like we do today. Yes, the content of faith was different, but it was by grace through faith. That's the only way, and that's what the Bible teaches. Okay, so they were not saved by doing these annual sacrifices. Um, now, you know, just like today, it says that we are to pray to ask for forgiveness when we sin. Okay, um, so that's what the Old Testament sacrifices were like then. You know, that was how they got their fellowship right with God, was by doing that. Um, now, I mean, if somebody wasn't, if somebody wasn't saved and they were told, you know, to, to, to sacrifice an animal for their sins or whatever, and they believed, they believed God, they believed that God would forgive them by doing that, and then they did that or something, that could be a way that they got saved, but it was by the faith that they had, okay? And that's what James says, you know, it's talking about from a man's perspective, but, uh, you know, because God knows the heart. God's not looking for, for fruit or for works, okay? Man looks for fruit and for works in other people's lives to see, you know, if their faith is true or not. God knows the heart. But God does say in the Bible that there will be fruit. There will be good works. And so, anyways, uh... You know, let's see here. The very reason they were offering the sacrifice is because they were acknowledging that they broke God's law, and Old Testament sacrifices were continual year after year. Why? Because they kept breaking it. Even the priest had to offer up for his sins as well as the people. There was no chair for him to rest upon. Why? Because his work was never done. The Bible says he standeth daily. Some people actually believe if they sinned but offered a sacrifice, now they weren't breaking the law anymore. They were keeping it. They were okay until they sinned again. Then it was, grab your animal, let's get saved again. If they happened to die before they could get the animal, that sacrifice, uh, they went to hell. And that's ludicrous. Missed the whole point for the law and the sacrificial system. The sacrifices were a reminder of their sinfulness and their need for the Lord and were a shadow of good things to come. Hebrews 10, 1-8 teaches that God does not and did not take pleasure in these sacrifices for sin. This wasn't a means of securing their salvation and pleasing God in regards to salvation. Okay? But, uh... So this is just a random plea. I just... I just feel this, uh, I'll make plenty more videos on this and get more intense and more uh, in-depth in the scriptures and everything, refuting the idea that people were saved by works or works in faith. But it's absolute nonsense, and it's blasphemy, it's heretical, and it needs to be rejected. And I don't consider somebody who's a hyper-dispensationalist a brother. And these people will try to say that they're not hyper-dispensationalists, and people will probably watch this and say, you don't rightly divide God's truth. But uh, I do. and. If you believe the nonsense that they were saved by works or works in faith, then you believe hyper-dispensationalism. Okay, you've been deceived, you've been taught a false teaching. You are over-dividing the word of truth. You're making divisions where there shouldn't be any, and you're dividing uh, the means of salvation, which is absolute nonsense. That's not what the Bible teaches. Okay, so I do understand that there are dispensations, and that there are divisions, but not when it comes to salvation. The content of faith is different, as I've said, yes. Okay, and that's, that's usually a claim that these hyper-dispensationalists will, uh, will try to use. Um, 
You know, they'll say, people couldn't be saved by believing in Jesus. He hadn't been here yet. Well, well no, duh. Okay? But they were saved by grace through faith. Uh, so, I'm just going to end. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.